All right, it says we're live. We will give it just a moment or two. I see an advertisement. It's always a, uh, always a good sign. So we'll give it another moment or two here and let that run. And actually, it looks like we are live now. So good evening, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well. Big Johnson, how are you? I am living the dream, sir. I'm sick as heck, but I am here and wanted to be with all the fabulous family here. <laughs> Hello, Gun Nation. How are you this evening? You know, I'm doing well, man. I uh, can't complain. I can't complain at all. We'll give everybody a few more moments to uh, jump in, and I have to respond to something really quick. Give me just a moment, if you don't mind. I mind, damn it. Yeah, I know. I know. Unfortunately, that one I actually had to do. Uh, that was for work, but... Uh, uh, anyways, uh, so so Wednesday night. So uh, guys, we don't have a, a laundry list of questions or anything like that or topics that we specifically want to cover. Uh, we spent a, a fair amount of time, especially on the last chat, with some very, uh, very significant discussion going on. So we thought it'd be a good idea to, to bring things back and open up the floor to you guys and talk about things that you guys want to talk about, answer any questions, anything like that. So be sure to, uh, you know, let us know what your questions are. Uh, put that at sign in front of our name and, and it give us a call out there. That would be very helpful, of course. But I do have one question. I thought it'd be appropriate, especially as we wind up towards the holidays uh, and start thinking about uh, gifts and that sort of thing, um, not only to other people, but also to ourselves. I don't know if you're like me, but I like to occasionally give myself a, a gift as well. And so I thought uh, it would be interesting. Uh, my first of, of two parts of this question is, um, if you could get a gift, um, a reasonably decent sized gift, but but within reality, within reality of what you could normally get. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking, hey, I want a tank. That's that's not what I mean. I do. In, unless that's within reality. I mean, then, then by all means, get a tank. What I'm talking about, if you could have any one uh, big gift that would be kind of your big gift of the year or whatever, that's firearms related, what would it be? Big Johnson, what would yours be? Um, I mean, it's, realistic um i'd like to have a, a barrett 50 cal um but it would be really you know you would have to have i would have to have the area to shoot it because it's not like you're going to wag that thing into a you know a normal range or even a hundred yard range uh, and i do have a place to shoot it now uh it's pretty far away but you know i could definitely put that sucker in the truck and go crank it off but i would really like to have one what about you Oh, man, a Barrett 50. That is pretty cool. Um, that's good. Well, uh, it's funny. We were, we were talking a little bit earlier um, about uh, about Dan Wesson's and that sort of thing. And Range Randy uh, uh, got into a Dan Wesson. Congratulations on that. And and that actually would be on the wish list for me. That's uh, and in fact, uh, Randy, it's funny that, that you mentioned Dan Wesson. You and probably eight or 10 other people over the last three or four videos that I've released, including the year end review, especially that one, people have been talking about Dan Wesson's either, hey, they've got one or they're interested in one um, or they want me to take a look at one. Usually it's they're very interested in one. But uh, but I, I too have enjoyed looking at Dan Wesson's over the years. And uh, one model that, that really catches my eye a lot, I think it's a really good looking gun, is actually the Guardian 9mm. Uh, now it's not very new, it's been around for quite some time, but I think they are really, really good looking 1911s. They're smaller, I like that uh, that kind of bob cut uh, in the back of the grip. I just think they're, they're cool looking. So that's on the list for the year. Now it'd be cool if it was a gift, I don't think that's gonna be realistic, but, um, but it is definitely on the list. I, I really wanna try Dan Wesson out. Now the struggle with that is that's one that I would want to keep. That would not be a TNE gun. So I have to, I have to navigate that carefully, <laughs> I guess you could say. So uh, that's what it would be uh, for me, I think. Yeah. No, they're great guns. Um, you know, I like Les Bear also, but uh, Les Bear is not, they're kind of not what they used to be. I, you know, one. one thing I like about Dan Wesson, I think, um, over something like a, a Les Bear or, or some of those other Nighthawk custom things like that, Dan Wesson gives you basically custom quality, I think, um, at, at a more affordable price. I mean, a lot of those are coming in at around like $1,200 to $1,800, kind of around that mark, depending on what model you get. 
there's the valor, I think the guardian, um, the discretion there, you know, there are several different models out there. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so I just, I think they're a little bit more attainable and you still get that really good quality of craftsmanship. So, um, I don't know. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, back when, like I had my last bear, it came in a really nice, you know, wooden case and all this other stuff. Now I'm seeing, seeing them come in cardboard boxes. Now mine was an older one, <coughs> excuse me, but, uh, I'm just like, man, they're not, they're not doing what they used to do. <laughs> so it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, and pistol Pete was saying that, uh, honest has a, uh, a, a guardian and I'm, I'm very jealous of that. He actually, I think he had his, uh, ported. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think that's kind of a, a unique thing. Now I don't think I would do that. That don't, that's not really a, a thing with me quite so much, but, uh, but I think the guardians are pretty cool looking. So at some point in 2019, Expect to see a Dan Wesson on the channel. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, I think the Guardian would probably be the one, but we'll have to kind of see. But going along with this, going along with the uh, the Christmas gift, and and I, I've seen a couple of different things out there. A new safe. Um, I saw a new safe, uh, which actually is a really good idea yeah. as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Jonathan Tardy, good to see you, man. Uh, let's see what uh, I think I saw somewhere out there. A Nighthawk. Um, yeah, Jeff England was saying a Nighthawk, which is pretty cool. Now, so we've talked about big gifts, but what about small gifts? Um, so if you were to ask people um, or people were uh, to approach you and say, hey, what do you want for Christmas and that sort of thing? And it was more along the lines of perhaps stocking stuffers or smaller gifts. Uh, so a little bit more um, price friendly, that sort of thing. What would you want? Uh, big Johnson, what do you think? Well, and that's what I've told everybody. Um, I, you know, when they fit really nice in a stocking, um, I want gift cards so I can buy what the hell I want to buy. Um, because it's like, you know, sometimes when family or friends that aren't true gun guys, you know, or gun people, uh, they don't, sometimes they don't know what to get, but you know, ammo is always a good thing. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, mags is always a good thing. So, but you know, to each their own. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't even think about this. Um, people were saying like, uh, uh, yeah, you were saying ammo. Texas teachers said that C Kim was talking about EDC flashlights. Steven said a Swiss army knife. So, so EDC knives, a lot of EDC gear fits kind of in that box, right? You, you kind of think maybe 200 or less, even $100 or less, you get into some of those. Um, I, I, I got some crap in fact, and I don't have them in front of me right now, but I got some crap on, uh, an EDC video and, uh, an Instagram picture that I did. Um, some of you guys know, I've got an old spider co, um, I think in Jura, I think that's what it is. It's from like 1994, 1995. It's been my carry knife forever. And I still carry it. I finally upgraded. I, well, sort of upgraded. I mean, I got a couple of new knives. I got a new spider co, um, I'll show it at some point in time. Um, and I actually got a Gerber knife as well. And it's one of those assist assisted opening yep. knives. And, and I like the Gerber because it wasn't very expensive. It was like 40 bucks or something like that. And that those are great, great stocking stuffers. Another thing for me is going to be cleaning gear patches. Uh, my, you know, Jonathan's on here. I mean, and I made the comment in that, uh, that Rand video I did on Sunday, that's great stocking stuffer material right there. Um, uh, because we go through that stuff, you know, that's consumable stuff. I probably go through 2000 patches a year, maybe a little bit more than that. And so that's the type of stuff I really like to stock up on because it's incredibly useful and you don't want to get home from the range. You've got three or four guns you want to clean and all of a sudden you're out of stuff, you know? Um, so I think, I think that type of stuff makes really good gifts for your, your, uh, gun friendly two a type of person. Yeah. What I do is, you know, and you can get them cheap too and, and wash them, but I get a lot of t-shirts and actually cut them up in small patches and bigger patches. And that's what I run, you know, so you can just chunk them in the washer. And, but uh, yeah, I did, I didn't want to miss this comment. Uh, Eddie PR is thanking yourself and me. Um, said he's been a while since he's caught a live video, but he didn't want the year to end without saying thank you to both of us uh, in the chat for buying his first PO seven. So congratulations, Eddie. That's awesome. Nice. Congratulations. It's a great gun. Um, that'll last you forever. Yeah. Love it. One of my favorites. 
Nice, nice. Well, so uh, so some pretty interesting stuff there, and and some things definitely to think about uh, for sure. So let's let's jump into some questions, and and again, guys, uh, be sure to to uh, bring us your questions. Now, hurt one uh, actually had a question: Do you think the P three sixty five is carry worthy and reliable yet? I've been wanting to buy one to carry, and just have been waiting on the bugs to be worked out. So, what do you think of that, Big Johnson? Personally, for me. Uh, since I had one break in my hand, the firing pin Harry's did. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not sold on it personally yet. I know you know Bald has it, and he hasn't had issues or anything with his yet. And you know, it very well could just be running great. Uh, but it's kind of that what if. You know, there's just I mean, I still hear you know just comments, not me personally, but I see comments. Well, oh, I had this issue and. I know they're working through it and, you know, trying to get them all fixed up, but you know, I, I just wouldn't trust it yet. Me personally, but that's just me. And well, if someone has it and it's working great. Hey, and, and you trust it by all means, keep rolling with it. What about you? you? Well, you had a pretty interesting experience uh, with that, which I'm sure would sour your taste pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was uh, not, not fun. What, what do you think about it? Well, so uh, on a personal level, I never had a problem with the P365. Uh, mine ran fine. And the the second one that I had that was kind of a stand-in, well, mine went to SIG to check out that peening, which turned out to be nothing. It, it ran fine too. So my experience was uh, by and large pleasant. Uh, but when I think globally, um, it's, it's one thing, and I think I mentioned it on the P365 versus the G2C video. Um, I, I have to recognize the fact that so many other people had a problem and I can't, I don't want to be naive to that fact. And so um, I think it's good to at least present that and go, hey, just so you know, other people, a lot of people have had uh, issues of various sorts and you have to take that with a grain of salt. Um, you know, I, I think there definitely were issues. Um, we saw some firsthand, of course, but uh, but I, I I haven't heard much lately, and I don't know if it's because the excitement has died down or if because they really have fixed the issue. Yeah. I'm seeing more and more people in the comments uh, telling positive stories, and and again, you take everything with a grain of salt, but that at least tells me that there's there's certainly hope for it. Um, if you wanted to get a P365 at this point in time. I, you know, as long as the born on date is within the last four or five months, I think you're probably okay. Um, you know, it, hopefully it would work and don't come, come back and yell at me if you get one and it sucks. Um, but, uh, but from what I gather, from what I gather, they've made enough rolling improvements, especially with the firing pin. I think that was the biggest cause for concern. Those firing pins were breaking. They've changed the design of that. And again, as long as it's past, I think it's like August or September, I think you're in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, very well might be working out fine, but just also with the size of that pistol, you know, and I've talked about it before in the size of my hands, um, it's, it's smaller than the shield. And, you know, like when I was trying to hold it, my thumb was like right at the end of the barrel and, you know, grabbing it from the waistband, I would feel more comfortable grabbing a shield, um, you know, from appendix than, trying to grab a 365, just me personally, you know, like I said, it's, it's, these are all my opinions only. Uh, you do have a question, main lobster fisherman of Instagram, any lube recommendations? I'm using uh, Hoppies Elite currently, but thinking of trying something new, hmm. you might want to check out your video. Yeah, uh, I did put out a video uh, this weekend that uh, that talked about Rand. Uh, there's different solutions. They've got their uh, Born Bolt, uh, they've got their CLP, and then their Hog Grease. And I'm a huge fan. It's it's run very well for me. Um, it meets my demands, and I'm not like you know a thousand rounds a day or anything like that. But uh, but I'll shoot you know three to six hundred rounds a week, perhaps. Um, and and it, so you know it meets my demands. It meets very well, and and it's relatively easy and that sort of thing. Not trying to be a commercial, but that stuff seems to work. Um, I like it quite a bit, uh, and uh, and so you know that's uh, you you might wander over there and and check that out. Yeah, I haven't tried any of their new stuff um, or newer stuff. You know, I've been using the Battleborn and been pretty happy with it, and I haven't had any issues of it burning off or anything like that. And you know, I'll shoot, look at it afterwards, and it's still very well lubed. So I haven't, um, you know, had any issues with it, but I'd be interested in trying out, you know, some of the stuff, uh, the RAND products. But uh, yeah, and then uh, Logan is actually telling us, I guess there's a new lubricant. I've heard of it a little bit on the liberal side, the liberal tears lube. 
I think that we all should try that. Okay, cool, cool. No uh, liberal tears. Now, right, yeah, right, right. Um, now, Pistol Pete actually has a fantastic question. He asked this a little while ago. I stopped my uh, little chat uh, so I could keep that on there. And he said, I would like to know the YouTube channels you guys like to watch or some lesser known channels to check out. So what do you think of that? Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, you know, it, you can watch all the big, you know, the big guys, and sometimes they kind of turn into a true commercial um, or an agenda kind of thing sometimes. Uh, so, you know, I watch, of course, you know, all the group that we're in, but, um, you know, I would say probably the smaller channels. I like Josh Benware a lot. Um, you know, I like Uncle Dan, you know, he's been uh, laying back a little bit. Um, you know, I, I just kind of like the the group, you know, of course, we've got a lot of our uh, subscribers here and stuff that, you know, family members that, that follow us. And of course, Coda Boy, you know, he's, he's a wealth of knowledge too. Um, you know, I kind of just stay in our group. Um, you know, when you stick with the big, or you go out to the big guys, sometimes it's just like watching a damn infomercial, you know, and if it's a newer gun, uh, that's out or something, you know, I might want to just watch it, but of course I take it with a grain of salt and I just watch it and then I kind of form my own opinion. Oh, and also we forgot to say this, 1776 is out on assignment this evening. We've had, a, I've seen a couple of these questions fly by. Uh, he will be back next week. So had some pressing stuff he had to take care of. So that's, what about you? that's why uh, Logan called him 1775. Yeah. Um, so he, he went down one number uh, because of that. Um, so as far as channels go and, and I'll admit I'm not as good right now at watching the videos. I've gotten pretty far behind just cause there's a lot of stuff going on at work and, and I've been busy doing some other things, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I would say the same. A lot of the, the channels that kind of are in our group, like Coda and uh, honest outlaw pops yeah. quest, uh, folks like that, humble marksman, uh, those folks, uh, I watch their videos now. I'm, I'm probably the worst at commenting because oftentimes I'm watching them while I'm trying to work or do something else. And so sometimes it's a little bit background, but, uh, but I'll also go out. I mean, if there's a new gun on the market or something, and, and oftentimes some of the bigger channels tend to get a hold of those. Um, I, I do watch those cause I just, I want to learn a little bit more and, and do a little bit of homework, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and then if I just want pure entertainment, uh, something, I mean, I might watch like Kentucky ballistics or even demolition ranch or something just cause it's entertainment. Um, there's there, there, I don't find quite as much value or, or facts or, or, you know, that they don't get into the nitty gritty of things quite so much. It's just entertainment, um, which is what all of this is to be honest with you. But, uh, uh, but I, I watch a variety of different, uh, things gun related, but then I, I sort of drift off and, and I get into things like car videos and that sort of thing that I, I tend to, um, and make that also background fodder while I'm doing other things. So oh, good deal. Uh, let's see here. I thought that was, yeah. And you know, a lot of people mentioned like T-Rex arms, grand thumb, demolition ranch, honest outlaw, you know, of course we're honest as a good friend of ours, um, you know, and pops and, you know, guns and gear has, has pretty good videos too, you know, and he releases a lot of the newer stuff um, and a lot of gear uh, related or, trinkets as you might say that you're going to hang on your ar or something like that so he, he has a lot of interesting stuff too but he's just he's just a cool dude um yeah. i i like him a lot he's the kind of person that i would want to meet and just sit down and you know uh have a drink and talk guns uh that 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 would be pretty cool i'm all right with that um, and then the gun collective um i i like their news program they seem to be sort of on the cutting edge of what's coming out um so that's usually a sneak preview of things coming out of the market um, and, uh, and there's some valuable information there as well. Now I, I will admit though, and some of you guys will probably hate me for this. Some of the more tactical channels, um, the, the like hardcore run gun sort of channels. I mean, it can be entertaining, but I don't find as much value in that. I want to know, um, what, uh, what somebody like me thinks about a product or a gun. I want to know, uh, you know, what somebody's views are on this or that, that's that, that there's no agenda. There's no trying to look cool or cinematography or anything. I just kind of want to know what other people's opinions of things are because it, it, influences um, sometimes me, or at least I get a little bit of education out of it. Uh, there's a channel I've been watching lately, um, especially for the Polymer 80 stuff, because he's got some pretty cool content. He's a very small channel, but uh, tactical considerations. Um, it's, a, it's a good channel. Uh, it's pretty entertaining. I mean, he seems like a cool dude. And, and so I, I dig stuff like that. I like wandering out and finding totally random 
uh, different little channels out there. Yeah. And I mean, I like Mac, you know, I have no problem with the military arms channel, you know, um, he, uh, you know, he has, and he's, he seems like a very honest person. Um, you know, we've had some comments, you know, what about Mac? Um, I think he's a very honest person. I don't really think he's on the take, you know, I've seen, you know, since he talks about Patreon and stuff like that, a lot of people, you know, get tuned off or turned off by that, but you know, and yes, I love Sage Dynamics. I think he really has some good content. Yeah, well, well it, he's not a he's not a run and gunner in my mind. He actually is one of those people that's a practical application shooter, and I dig that. Yeah, he he doesn't you know do all that crap and stuff. I mean, and I, and I understand about watching your back and stuff, but you know, every time they shoot, they're you know doing all this, and you know, some of that stuff gets yeah, some of that stuff gets a little tiring. Right, right. Justin Opinion's another one. I just saw that Pistol Pete said, yeah, Justin Opinion's great. Again, it's another person that's just, uh, he's kind of like us, right? Um, he just likes to talk about guns and shoot guns and, and his own perspective of things. Again, that's the type of stuff that I find the most value in. And, and I base my channel kind of on that too. It's just average guy talking about something that he likes or dislikes about a product or a gun or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, Logan, we were talking about Kentucky Ballistic Shot. He's a good guy. I don't have any problems with him. And now there's some, you know, and I'm not going to start throwing up names. There, there are some people that you watch the video, you know, and, and one thing that kind of drives me crazy and I've watched some of the big, big channels and I mean, they'll have like a minute intro and I'm just like, or some, you know, I've even seen some of the smaller channels that are starting up. They'll have like a minute intro and it'll be all this bang, bang, bang stuff. And all of a sudden it's like, hi, I'm Bob. You know, <laughs> and it's like, okay, what happened? You know, so I think they need to kind of chill out on some of that stuff. And, and you know, I'm all, that's all great if you want to have an intro, but it doesn't need to be a minute long. And then you have a four minute video. So, you know, there need, um, need to fit what you're about, not what you want to be. That I, I think that that's well said. Um, I think that's very true. Now, uh, blow by you 187 said tactical toolbox. Yeah. I like John a lot. Um, I, I, uh, I, I think he's got some cool stuff. Now, again, I'm into polymer eighties and, and kind of blinging out your guns and that sort of thing. And I think his channel is more geared towards that. And he presents a lot of different gear. Uh, and so I, 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 I think that's some cool stuff, but I also, I'm a fan of some of the, um, videography and cinematography and, uh, photography channels out there like Peter McKinnon and other things and and we're going off way way far left right now but uh uh but i i think he models some of his stuff after some of those photographers which i appreciate so I, I there's a little bit of value in that for me at least oh 1776 he said his favorites are you me but he hates 1776 or bust yeah yeah well who can blame you really yeah. right yeah and paul harrell's a good guy too he's you know and i can relate with him you know this gun doesn't fit my hand very well you know, so <laughs> definitely relate with him. But uh, any any new stuff that you know, any like gear stuff that you're testing out, or you know that you're kind of trying to use every day, or try, or anything like that. Any, I mean, any stuff that I don't know you wear on your person recently. Um, I, anything that's new that, that I'm wearing or anything? No, not so much. I mean, I've been carrying a little bit, the, uh, the Glock 19, uh, gen five MOS. Um, uh, so that, that's been kind of different. Uh, it's a different experience. I've been carrying a, a new Harry's holster and I don't have it in front of me, which is terrible. I'm a terrible friend, but, uh, but I'm, I'm going to have all the video on that here, uh, before too long, but, uh, but no, I mean, I've been testing, definitely testing some gear. I mean, I don't know if I showed this last week or not, but I've been running the comp, um, and I've, I've done, one round of testing uh, and caught that on video and, and I've got one more round of testing I want to do because it ran like a champ with 147 and 124. It struggled a little bit with 115. I would occasionally have one round and then it would uh, fail to feed. Um, occasionally I'd have three or four, maybe five rounds and then it would fail to feed. And I think it's because the uh, recoil spring is too heavy for that because the back pressure that's coming in. So um, I got a lighter recoil spring, so I want to go back and I want to try specifically 115. And I know people say, why would you run 115 with a comp gun? I get that. But I want to see what it can do. I, I want to put it through its paces and, and be able to say, you know, here's what I found and, and here's what it, what it ran with and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm, I'm kind of new to that environment a little bit, uh, but it's been interesting and, and I'll be uh, I'll be excited to share that. So that's been a 
a recent uh, uh, project uh, among other polymer 80 type stuff right now because right now there aren't any new guns there's nothing yeah. exciting to get so I'm, I'm i'm stuck doing some of the polymer 80 stuff although this weekend that long gun drops on saturday so you guys will have to you guys will have to tell me what you think of the video it's something very different i've never done it before I'm not fond of that style of video uh, at all. Um, so you guys will have to tell me if you like it or you hate it. Don't be shy, please. Yeah, Josh was asking, uh, Josh out there, and he was asking about, you know, has anybody got their hands on the new P10C or P10 Optic? And it's actually not out yet. There's a lot of catalog listings for it. And I talked to CZ and they said it wouldn't be out officially till 2019. And I think they want to show it at SHOT Show get everybody excited about it and then hopefully drop it. I know the mags are already out for the F. Um, you could, I did a post Instagram on that a long time ago when the day they received them at this particular gun store, and it's a big gun store. Um, they're actually nationwide and uh, they had just gotten them in. So I know the mags are there, but yeah, I've actually been testing something new. Everybody's probably seen the Colonel blade. Um, and you know, that's not a big deal. It's been out for a while, but I'm testing this, the Cero Works holster that he's making for them. And I'll tell you what, it's actually very impressive. Uh, it fits in and, and I'll wear it between my belt and my jeans. And man, I don't even know it's there. So I've been testing this quite a bit. And you know, a lot of people, even though I carry these, I still carry a pocket knife, you know, cause these you don't want to pull out in public cause people freak out, but pocket knife's more acceptable. And I don't really give a shit what people say. Y'all should know that about me by now. <laughs> but, you know the uh let's see here yeah the, well, i've seen I, I know that the f is out just not the optic ready f i've seen the f or i've i've heard well, some stores it's well i and and josh i'm i'm interested in that because um i and and i i now have some buddies that that are on the inside of cz which is kind of nice and from what i understand nothing is out yet um, nothing has been released to the public. Um, and there, there are a couple that, that are out a little bit in the wild in CZ employees hands, but that's it. Um, so I, I, I'd be really curious, um, about that or, or what, uh, you have found. So, uh, that's the latest Intel I have from CZ. So, um, I, I'm excited to try and there might be some pre-testing, in a couple of weeks. So I'm excited about that. Um, I, I won't be able to share very much um, uh, because again, it's not, uh, it's, it's not necessarily for public consumption, but, uh, but I'm excited to, to give it a try at least. I, that's S model. I'm psyched about. Yeah. I, I want the F or I think that's going to be, you know, the full size, the, uh, and of course I did see the release from CZ about the shadow Two orange. It'll be available in 19. So I did see that also, but you know, I've got, two shadow two. So that wasn't super exciting for me, but I think it, you know, I, I want to hear about it. Of course. So, it's so out in the wild. Now let me ask you, is this, this from the custom shop? Yeah. Well, they're, they did a release and they showed it. It's a shadow two with the orange grips and the orange base plate, but it's the shadow two version. Um, now I don't know, you know, what all they've done to it. If it's like the Accu shadow two, um, you know, I don't know if it's like that or not, but uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to, check it out now do, what about the uh, czc that one i'm actually interested in the czc uh-huh which one is that i mean it might maybe i've heard it something else called All something right. else. uh stall everybody for just a second oh did you already get one? No. Oh, he's got a book he's gonna bring wow reb you didn't have to do that wow that's very nice Thank you so much. Oh, R. E. thank R. E. you very much. Gave, R. E. B. gave ten dollars. He didn't have to do that, but we appreciate it so much. We're Maybe not that, in for the that's money. Very nice of you. Okay, so it's the it does have the barrel bushing like the Acu Shadow, <coughs> the Acu Shadow too. I'm I'm headed there now. I did pick up um, that's the so the CZ catalog. That's the it's two sided, which is kind of cool. Yeah. CZ catalog, but the CZ C is this guy and i know this is just a book it's a terrible picture but this is what the czc looks like so to me it looks like sort of a, a hybrid between something like a shadow two and maybe a tso a little bit what's the barrel uh, length it says ld so i'm curious if it's a long the barrel length is long uh no i hang on a sec let me see if i can find it 
I have no idea, but it says the double action is between eight and eight, eight point five pounds, and the single action is between three and three point five pounds. So, I'm in for that. Uh, that looks pretty freaking sweet. Although I imagine it's probably going to be between fifteen and two thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm sure it's not going to be cheap. Uh, let's see here. We're in Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, Miami Armory. Okay, we'll definitely look them up. And and it could. I wonder if I wonder if they're showing them on like <laughs> website that sort of thing, but they don't have them. But I don't know. I, I could be totally wrong. I, I've it, already seen them on websites. You know, they've got catalog part numbers and stuff, but they're actually not for sale yet. So, you know, and very well, who knows? Maybe someone's got some early. But that's just what CZ told me. They weren't going to officially be released until 2019 for sale. And I'm talking about the optic P10s now. Yeah. You know, there could maybe someone tested a regular P10 or it was they bought it from CZ and now they're selling it. I don't know. Who but, knows? Yeah, bald. Yeah, it's only the two stooges tonight. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, and I do. Well, I uh, got something this week and it's in a bag. Uh, so and it's it's pretty cool. So. It will be, uh, I'll be doing some reviews on it, but, um, what's in the bag? It goes bang. You're not going to show it. I'll show you the bag. Oh my God. Oh, it's heavy and it's in this bag. <laughs> it's a bowling ball. No, it's not a bowling ball, but it, it's, well, it's got a bunch of other stuff in there too, but it's uh, definitely fun. Nice. nice. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I've been kind of, kind of showing some of the stuff. Uh, and actually, I did put out um, what's the new section that YouTube should have given me forever ago? The little uh, comment or whatever the hell it's called. Hmm. I, I put a picture of some of the items on there a while back, but it is officially finished. L look, everybody's saying you have to show it. Huh? Everybody is saying you have to show it. <laughs> see, Kevin, say we deserve to see it. Yes, you do. Okay, y'all are right. Look at that peer pressure. Way to go, guys. <laughs> hey, it worked. Okay. Yes, Channel Cat Pops is such a troll. It was it Pops that was doing it. No. It takes me a minute to get it out of here because it's. Uh... That's what she said. Yep. All right, I'll show you the first part of it. Nice. And that's different. What the hell is that? And you'll see something special about that one. Can you see what's engraved on it? Nice. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So this is going to be, this is the Texas edition AR pistol. So that is what it is, is, and it's pretty damn awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So, That's a new, uh, new 22. Uh, no, it's not, not a 22. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a five, five, six or two, you know, two, two, three, five, five, six. So yeah, it's a fun one. So, so I'm, I'm curious. Um, and, and a lot of people have been telling me I need to try, uh, an AR again, or put an, an AR on the channel, do a build, something like that. And, and I want to 2019, I want to do an AR, but are you guys more interested in seeing a two, two, three, five, five, six, or a pistol caliber carbine uh, AR style? What, what, what is of more interest to you? Because I, I'm sort of indifferent on it. I've done like the scorpion, that sort of thing, but uh, but I so I it, it doesn't really matter to me. But I'm kind of curious as to what other people would want to see. Uh, hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, I and the reason you know I could have gone with 300 blackout and all the other stuff, and I have the PCC nine millimeter, which I love, but you know I've got the scorpion too, um, or the scorpion pistol already. So I really wanted to keep it kind of, I guess, easy. Uh, so I decided to go with the 5.56. Five, mm, barking Spider 2. 
I'm, I'm getting a variety of different uh, responses here on this. So Logan, I, I, I don't have one yet. Um, so that I, I, this 2019, I will definitely do something. Now, David Giles is saying uh, 10 millimeter pistol caliber carbine. Actually, that would be uh, kind of cool, although 10 millimeter is expensive. 50 and, Beowulf would be awesome. Uh, right. Um, and Bald is saying uh, 458 SOCOM. Uh, Sandpaper is saying 300 blackout. Um, uh, let's see. Another four, uh, 45 carbines suppressed. That, those actually are pretty cool for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, you know, and I've talked about this before and I know you have too, but I talk about, you know, ammo related because I don't just buy like 10 boxes of ammo. You know, I buy tons and tons of ammo. So I didn't really want to introduce another caliber that I would have to stockpile. So that's why I went with 556, 223. But, you know, if I brought in 300, 300 blackouts, not the cheapest either. But um, that's why I decided, you know, that I would go with what I did. See, Kim is saying a carbine in Smith & Wesson 500. Yeah, there you go. Big old hog leg. <laughs> Frank is just saying just buy a Howard's or that's, that's about what it is, man. Yeah. Yeah, you have to reload for three hundred. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm kind of thinking an actual AR. I'm I'm thinking two two three five five six because um, I I think that's a good caliber. It's relatively inexpensive to shoot, um, relatively versatile. But I'm thinking probably like like a ten inch ten inch barrel or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, this one's a ten and a half, but it does have the barking spider, so it's a little longer. And the barking spider even allows for uh, yes, it's a barking spider, and it spikes did it for the fart, you know. So it is that that that's what the deal is. But um, yeah, the barking spider gives it a little more dwell time, which a ten and a half is usually okay with that. And uh, just so you know, my personal shopper for picking everything out was uh, Coda Boy. He was on speed dial when I was buying everything. I was at the store, but there's a lot of cool things about this one that I'm going to talk about in the video that a lot of people probably won't know what I tried to do with this one. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to do gas? Are you going to do gas or piston? Kim is asking you that. You know, it's a good question. I don't know. Um, I, I, I think, is it direct impingement? Isn't that one of them, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, this one's gas, but you know, I've got, one's piston too but uh 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 insight freedom was saying uh anyone else so busy you can hardly keep up this these days well it is the season I, I mean absolutely it's this is a crazy time of year i think for all of us yeah closing out the year is always crazy but uh yes i have the hunts for foods asking i do have the sega ak and i have not done the conversion because kind of thinking that i'm going to keep it um, in the rifle configuration because I've looked at the value on it. And since it's actually, you can use it in all 50 states, my version right now, uh, there's a huge demand for it. Not saying I'm ever going to sell it, but since it's Russian, it's only going up. Hmm. And people are getting, asking stupid money for it and they're getting it. But like I said, I'm not going to sell it. Yeah, yeah. And we already have someone who has already claimed it if I ever do. <laughs> nice. Uh, Kevin Roberts is saying uh, 10.5 is as short as you want to go with a 5.56 five, or 223. And that's not the first time I've heard that. Uh, several people have said that, even though I've got a couple buddies at Centerfire that have like seven inch barrels, that sort of thing. I, I think reliability is uh, affected by that. And, and the amount of noise that they put out, especially with a barrel that short, is uh, inside, especially, is pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. So I think 10.5, 10 that's. That's good. And it could still be, you know, home defense or whatever. I mean, that's still, that's still a pretty short rifle. Yeah. And that's why I went with a 10, five. Uh, Josh has a question. Anybody have any experience with the 22 cadet kits for the PO seven and the PO nine? Uh, yes, Josh, I have a 22 conversion kit for my PO nine. I've got videos on it. It runs great. And I highly recommend it. I have not bought the one for my PO seven, but I do know people who have them and they haven't had any issues with them either. I do not have any experience with them. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, Texas Teachers asked us a couple of a couple of times, and I'm sorry I forgot. He said, "What ammo do you recommend for the AR?" I mean, hell, you can run. You know, this one. I mean, I ran 62 grain. I ran 55 grain, um, and it ran everything fine. 
um, you know, I just did some tests to make sure that it would cycle correctly. But um, yeah, Channel Cat said he has a seven and a half inch AR pistol, but it isn't a hundred percent reliable. That's the same thing I've heard too. So yeah, that's why I wanted to stay with the ten five. But I will say the the really small AR pistols look pretty freaking sweet. Oh, they're, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, they're really cool. But you know, and that's that's the thing. You know, with American Resistance, um, you know, their AR nines they can do them really small and they run perfect. But you know, he even said, you know, if you go too small with the ARs, they have a lot of issues with them. So, but uh, anybody looking forward to the Arex Delta? A hundred percent. It's on the list. Um, I really want to try. Now, I've had a couple of people tell me why do that. I mean, it's just like every other uh, polymer compact gun, whatever. But I, you know what? I'm interested. I think it's kind of cool looking. And I haven't done an A-Rex yet. I've shot uh, actually Big Johnson's uh, A-Rex, uh, Rex Zero. But uh, but I want to try the Delta. I think it looks cool. Yeah. I, you know, it looks like it's kind of an inbred between the P-10 and it's got a bunch of guns in the Glock. It's got a bunch of them in it, but just looking at it, and I, I don't know if you saw the newest video that they did. Some people actually got to go out and shoot it. And I watched a little interview from a guy that got to shoot it. And he said, you know, at first he wasn't, he didn't think that, you know, it was all that great, but the more and more he shot it, you know, he liked it. But I don't know it, that, you know, you're getting into the striker fire stuff again. And, and there's just, the market is so flooded with it. The one that, and we've talked about this before. The one that I'm super, super excited about is that Monarch, um, you know, the uh, from Nemo Arms, the Monarch with the uh, aluminum. It's the striker fire, but it is an aluminum frame. It's got the MOS, the suppressor sides, threaded barrel, things like that. I think that's really awesome. You know, one thing I have found, um, and and I, I've been lucky enough to test a, a pretty good variety of firearms at, up to this point, especially polymer striker fired guns. Every single one of them is a little bit different. Um, the, the feel, the temperament, uh, the amount of recoil, I mean, all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I had a, a bit of an interesting conversation with a guy talking about perceived recoil, and there's actually no such thing as that. I, I'm a believer that there is, but uh, uh, because your perception is a good portion of, of how you function. But uh, um, I, I think they all have their own little... Uh, idiosyncrasies and I think it's so fascinating and there are some that you connect very well with and there are some that you probably don't or maybe and there are some people that probably will shoot anything and it doesn't really matter to me it definitely matters there are some guns I just don't shoot very well they they don't perform out of my weird shaky hands like uh, some people do so I think that's part of the fun of it yeah no and I can agree with that I mean there's definitely some striker fires I shoot better than other ones uh and you know I've said this before there's the only Glock that I shoot pretty well is the Glock 19X and the 17L. And I actually shoot the 19X very well. Um, but it's, you know, and I've made this statement before, the little extra piece of polymer lip on the 19X that hangs down kind of over the mag, um, that actually gives my finger just a little more real estate. So it actually works well for me. But, um, you know, I think it's going to be, I think that that that's what helps me. Um, yeah, and Harry's making the comment about the Monarch is going to be the complete success or flop, and I agree with that. You know, it's really going to go out and hit the market. And the bad thing is they haven't, and I'm sure they're going to talk about it at Shot Show, but they just haven't released anything. I mean, I just looked yesterday; they haven't released anything about the uh, about the uh, MSRP. You know, I have no clue what that gun's going to be. It could be fifteen hundred bucks. It could be three thousand dollars. I just have no idea, but the FDE version of it's pretty badass. It looks like a scar. So it looks like the FDE scar where it's kind of the two tone. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, uh, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say target 725 was saying uh, the work YouTube channel, which I'm not familiar with uh, yeah. mentioned a metal frame SIG P320. Uh, that's going to be a limited release. I know they did the the sidearm for like the I, I don't know if it's the color guard or uh, uh, what have you, but uh, um, I you know a, a metal three twenty would be interesting. I would actually be fascinated to see what that was like, um, especially because like three twenties, I think they're good guns, they're fine guns, but I don't shoot them as well as I would like to. And I wonder if a a steel frame or even an alloy uh, frame P three twenty would make a little bit of a difference. 
It could. I mean, you know, one thing that I thought was pretty cool, BNT has it uh, and it's actually coming out and it's the it's the SIG P320 lower, but it actually has an arm that folds out and turns it into an SBR. So you can take your frame and your registered trigger, which is the firearm on the 320, and you can put it in this unit, put your frame on it, and then it just folds out and turns into a little SBR. Uh, I think it's really cool, but it sucks you have to put a freaking tax stamp on it, but you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. Harry said he's reached out to Nemo and they were quick quick to communicate till he started asking about specifics, so they wouldn't give him anything. So I think they're keeping it all for a shot show. But yeah, and, and it wasn't aluminum, the one that I saw. Um, you know, they had it all put together with a with a frame on, or excuse me, with a slide and stuff on it, but it was polymer lower. So, uh, you know, and I'm wondering if work, and I know work, um, I wonder if he is, uh, you know, because I know that we talked about, you know, the Nemo arms, and then he had his chat like a day or so after, and um, he brought it up also, you know, about the Nemo arms. So, and it kind of does look a little bit like a SIG, and, you know, it has a lot of characteristics from different guns. But I think they've taken the best of all the guns and put it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Harry's saying the P320 metal frame is specifically for competition. Okay. Uh, I, I'd be interested. I, I would be interested to know what the shooting characteristics are like. Um, uh, and and Johnny Danger, no news yet on the Strike B. Um, I, I checked with Centerfire, and uh, they were able to communicate uh, with, uh, I guess, I don't know if it was a distributor or Archon. I'm not sure. And they're, it's coming. Uh, it's coming. It's the same message we've heard from them before. Uh, but then as far as the general feedback and sales, I, that I also don't know. But Big Johnson and I were talking about this before uh, the, the, the stream started. And, you know, we haven't seen very much about the Archon. And, and that's a little bit concerning. Now, you know, sometimes I buy firearms because I think it's something that you two would be interested in. You guys would uh, find fascinating. But sometimes I just want to try a gun. I just want to try it. And I throw a video out there. If people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. Um, but this is one that I, I really kind of want to just try. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, everybody's going to have their opinions. You know, I mean, some people might really love it. Some people might not like it. You know, I mean, I say to each their own, um, you know, and hell, I don't buy guns for what people are going to like. I buy guns for what I like. Um, so, but um, let's see here. Okay. Bald's talking about bourbon again. I'm in. Speaking of that, you know, I'm not feeling real good, so I had a little coffee with bourbon in it. Hopefully, that'll make me feel better. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know if, you know, and I, I, hell, I had this, the, you know, my SIG P320 forever and really, really liked it. Um, but, you know, I kind of fell out of love with it. Uh, not that it's a bad gun. I just shot other guns so much better. <laughs> Mean Gene uh, is saying any rumors about uh, Shot Show? I heard Glock is going to show Sig how to build a t ten stack Micro Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I think that I think that you know, going back to the three sixty five, I think when the three sixty five came out, and you know, it was a small pistol that held so many rounds. I'm hoping that that's going to incentivize or have other people, you know, maybe it, it probably would be Glock. I was thinking, and you know, we've talked about this before. It might be Glock. It might be M and P, you know, uh, Smith and Wesson, somebody like that. But I think trying to get somewhere in that market where you're not exactly copying uh, them, I think that would be cool, you know, for people to have that. But like I've said before, hell, I've got a plus two extension on my shield. So my shield is a 10 plus one, you know, so you know, if, if I was a betting man, I'd say that Glock wouldn't do it. Um, at least at first, maybe two or three or four years down the road, Glock is not known for being yeah, they're really at the forefront. I mean, if you guys remember the Glock 43, they were not the first kid on the block. They were like the fifth kid on the block. And by that time, the shield and the XDS, and, and there may have been a couple of others, uh, the car, some of those yeah. firearms had been out for quite some time. Uh, now the 43 is a great gun and Glock did a very good job with it. It's been pretty much not flawless, but it, it's, it's done well. Um, but, uh, but they're not, they're not usually the first man out of the gate for stuff like that. If, if, if I, I kind of thought about that the other day, who would be a manufacturer that would potentially, uh, try that? It might be Smith and Wesson. Um, and I think they come out with the, you know, the 3.6, the, you know, compact. I mean, they, they've got so many, and 
you know, Jesse even brought it up, you know, the Glock 26, of course, it's the fat baby. The 9C is kind of the fat baby. And I mean, they hold the same amount of rounds. They're just chunkier. So, but yeah, you're right. It probably would be M&P. It probably would be Smith & Wesson. And, and I would venture to say that it might be something like a, um, a, a, sh a shield 3.0 or something like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of guessing at this point, not trying to start any rumors or anything like that, but, uh, um, I, I think, I think they would be potentially a runner up for that, or maybe even HK or something. Cause I've really thought that HK would, uh, put out some sort of single stack or something like that. So I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Well, you know, what was so weird, and Harry and I were talking about it the other day, too. Um, you know, Smith & Wesson, okay, they came out with the 3.6, 2.0, you know, and they've got the four, or of course, the normal four-inch four, four inch barrel out. But then they had the 9C before, which was the 3.5 barrel. So they've got the 9C, 3.5. Now they've got the new 3.6. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, you're talking microscopic differences there's no i don't understand you know and if you can carry a four inch gun you can or if you can carry a 3.6 inch gun you can carry a four inch gun so yeah i just i don't see why they have to do these little tiny but i i have to think it's just perception because really you know even if you have a four inch barrel you know having a longer having a longer um uh, grip or excuse me having a longer holster actually fits better if you're going to carry an appendix you know um because that part's down in your damn pants you know it's really the grip that you have to worry about so and all those grips are the same length so i don't know what i don't i don't i just don't get it well it's funny harry is saying that he can't keep the 3.6 holsters in stock even though he doesn't see a real advantage and 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 he and i've talked about that a couple of times i totally agree with that however Anytime somebody comments on the channel anymore um, about Smith and Wesson and M and P, it's almost always the three point six. It is rarely the four, or the four and a quarter, or the five inch. It's almost always the three point six. So, so maybe, maybe Smith and Wesson had some intel uh, that uh, that we're just not thinking of, and they said, okay, we've done the five, the four and a quarter, the four, but here's the real genius. We're going to cut it down a little bit more and go with a 3.6 and it's going to blow the doors off of everything. But, but they sell and they sell like hotcakes. But they had the 3.5 in the 9C. So it's even smaller. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. Whatever. Well, and I wonder if they decided they were going to go with the 15 round because um, that's, you know, that's the 3.6. And they just decided the 9C, you know, that that that's a thing of the past, which is too bad. I think the 9C is a fantastic firearm. Well, um, you know, my 9C, I carry 18 plus one in it, or 17 plus one. So it's got 18 rounds. I don't carry the small little thing. I carry a full-size grip or full-size mag with the X grip on it. So it just works better for my hand. But, you know, I guess to each their own, whatever, you know, I think it's just another thing to get people talking, you know, or I got to have the 3.6. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, Harry's talking about they'll come out with a 3.2 next. Yeah, they probably will. <laughs> probably will. Well, it's funny. Ty Judd was saying sometimes um, it's just the the must-have, the newest and the greatest. And, and you're probably right. I mean, I think there's probably something psychological there that people oh, yeah. are like, oh, it's new. It's got to be better. It's It's got to be more exciting. And so they go with that. And and really, I mean, if you've got the 4-inch, and that's why I've never done the 3.6-inch. Um, I, I think they're cool. There's nothing wrong with them. But I have a 4-inch. They're there isn't enough of a difference. The video would be so incredibly boring to me because it would just be like, Hey, I've done this gun before. It's exactly the same, but it's four tenths of an inch shorter. Everything else is the same. And mm -hmm. I, I, I just have struggled with the idea of doing that. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, but I, you know, I think like we're talking about it's perception, you know, it's the latest and greatest and people have to have it. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, everything in Texas is bigger. That's true. Uh, Jeff, you're right. M and P's have gotten affordable. I'll tell you, that's one of the great things about uh, Smith and Wesson, especially the M and P line and the the shields and and some of those. I mean, and even their some of their rifles, they're very affordable. It's easy to get into those, and they're good quality. It's I, I give a lot of props to Smith for that. Yeah, and they have a great you know lifetime warranty. I mean, they'll pay it there and back. You know, so. <laughs> ball, ball is saying I wouldn't publicly say I have the four inch. <laughs> oh, bald. Yeah, well, the 365, you know, there's a comment here from Kathleen that the 365 is still too pricey. But hell, if you look on, what was it, uh, Palmetto State, they had them for 4.99. So, 
I mean, they were apparently they maybe got a big batch of them. And I'm starting to see them in stores and they're just sitting there. You know, people aren't, I don't know if it's just people are, you know, and I even asked a lady that I visited the other day, you know, how long have you had this? And she said they've had it for quite a while. So I don't know. Mm hmm. And Channel Cat is saying the Taurus G2C all day. I'd say, man, I, I agree. I, I think it's been a fantastic gun. And I still periodically get a comment or two that says, uh, you know, Taurus, or you lost my respect because you reviewed a Taurus or whatever. And, and you know, I, I kind of get it. Their reputation hasn't been <laughs> that good over the years. Yeah, I, know, I know I know a couple of uh, gun stores uh, that are local that just won't carry Taurus. Uh, but, but I think that's also a little bit short-sighted uh, because – even even if a manufacturer has produced some duds over time, um, they they still have the ability or or there's still the opportunity to make some firearms that are better. And I think the G2C is definitely uh, it's it's a step in the right direction. I actually I kind of want to try the TH9C. I think that's another one. It's hammer fired, but it's similar in size to the G2C just to see if it's the same experience. But man, my G2C has been fantastic and it's a good little shooter. And for 200 and I think I paid to like 225 or something. That's tough to beat. It really is. Yeah. And I shot one and there wasn't anything wrong with it. Uh, doesn't have the greatest trigger, but I mean, hell, I think it's going to do the job. And, you know, matter of fact, I know a guy that has, well, he has one, he bought his wife one. I think his kid has one too. So I think he has three of them in his family and he got them for really great prices. They were on a big sale. So he bought three of them. Um, yeah. And hell, I agree with Jeff. I'd take the Taurus way over a high point, but you yeah. know, high, point, high points run. I've, you know, I mean, you know, not that they're great, but they mostly work. Uh, let's see here. Heck, I was going to say, we're getting down to the, we're getting, <clears throat> we only got like five minutes left. Uh, Mario, good to see you. Uh, Josh is saying XDS mod two nine millimeter. Been there, done that. Uh, there's a, a review on the channel. It's an okay gun. It's it's a fine gun. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I would opt for the Shield or the PPS or even a Glock forty three first. Not to say it's not a good gun, but I just prefer those three over the XDS. And and I think a, a part of it is that grip safety. Um, I I don't care for the uh, uh, the newer grip safety on it. The old one I actually preferred. And then the trigger I don't get along with quite as well. At least with a Glock, I'm 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 adept enough that I can take it apart and I can kind of tweak the trigger to get it to where I really want it. Um, so I would probably opt for any of those first. But again, the XDS, there are a lot of fans. A lot of people really believe in them. So, you know, to each his own. Yeah, and I'm not a huge fan of them. I, I feel that it's on a striker fire pistol. You don't need four safeties. And and But then again, you know, people that are really, you know, super, super safety conscious, you know, I mean, and, and I know a lot of people when they're first getting into carrying a gun, you know, they want that extra protection. So they'll they'll get all of that stuff. I don't think you need a grip safety on anything or put it this way. If you've got a grip, you don't need a grip safety and a regular safety like a 1911 has. Um, I think one or the other is fine, but that's just my personal opinion, too. But for whatever works for you, by all means, use it. Right. Right. So, and I mean, they have some nice triggers on some of them and. I just think it's a little overkill personally. Um, let's, let's hit one more question here real quick. Um, Ree's got a question. Uh, I just compared the FN 509T to the CZ P09 and the size difference between these two guns is minimal. Uh, but to me, the P09 seems so much bigger. Anyone else? Uh, I would agree that the P09 is, it, it is a bigger gun. Um, you know, it's, I mean, of course in somebody's hand, but this one has a, 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 um, comp on it too but i would say it's definitely a bigger gun uh i would say the 509 is is fatter um but you know i would say it's probably the p09 is is a larger sized gun uh, i would agree with that yeah i would as well um and and, and both being great guns um i, I the I, for whatever reason, have never gotten along altogether that well with the P07 and the P09. I don't know what it is. It's basically got the same trigger that the uh, the P01 Omega does, and and for for whatever reason, I shoot that P01 Omega a lot better. But uh, uh, but yeah, I'd say the 509 is smaller, especially in the slide. It's going to have a shorter slide. So, hmm. um, but again, both good guns. Yeah, and Jonathan's asking, you know, how do I like the stock trigger on the P07 and P09? I actually really like it. Um, you know, I've trained a lot with it, and I like it, and you know, and KS knows this also, 
you know, you can buy one in the store and it'll feel kind of gritty and crunchy and things like that. However, the more you shoot it, it smooths completely out. And I even told Bad Billy that when he bought his and he was like, man, it's gritty and crunchy. And hell, he was just on a chat last night and he was saying how much he loves his PO7. I mean, they actually turn into super nice triggers and you can put a trigger kit in it for like nothing. I mean, just a spring, a simple spring kit uh, and bring it down. Uh, you don't have to do the full blown Cajun gun work thing. Um, but I really, really like them. I shoot them very well. Nice. Nice. Well, it's getting to be about that time, my friend. Um, any uh, closing remarks? No, I uh, am picking up the 1911 tomorrow. It's been getting tuned and uh, I will pick that up tomorrow and do the review on everything that I've done on it. And I have a list of all the parts that were done to it on the last video. And I'll be doing a review on this uh, new AR pistol and some other stuff I've been testing and evaluating and some stuff I got and I have been testing it and it sucks. Um, so we'll be kind of talking about that a little bit too. Uh, but anyway, that's what I have coming up. What about you? Nice, nice. I, I do want to show a couple things real quickly. Okay. I'm getting back into Glock 26s a little bit. Uh, that's a Gen 4 I picked up, and it was specifically because I'm doing a Polymer 80 Shocker um, uh, Glock 26. So, so I'm I'm giving it a try again. I, I sort of put it off for a while, and I was a little bit critical about it. So I'm I'm trying it again and seeing seeing if my thoughts change. And and I did want to show this real quick because I hadn't shown it yet. Picked up a, a Zafiri Precision uh, slide. It's kind of a, a burnt bronze or a midnight bronze on that. I wanted to show you guys. I'm I'm super excited. Best polymer 80 that I've built. Um, it basically went together like a champ. I wish Mateo was here. I'd uh, share that with him. Uh, we we swap uh, polymer 80 stories periodically. Uh, so I'm excited about that. So working on some of those types of things. Uh, again, to stem the tide until SHOT Show when new uh, guns come out uh, that we can get excited about. But oh, Show the box. Show that box, too, if you want to. The box. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, best presentation of a product I have ever seen. So... Can you guys see that okay? This says blacklist. You guys probably know. So so they do barrels. And I'll just show you this. I mean, this box is huge. First, it comes with a, a big pile of really nice stickers. And it comes with the barrel. And actually, there's a patch in there as well. You know, it's it's overkill, but uh, but I I like that. I appreciate that sort of thing because I can turn around and I can use this box for other stuff. You know, it's a watertight box, which is really nice. Yeah. So I just I you know I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it's that the little cool. it's the little things. Yeah, that is cool. So, you, can put your, you can put your weed in it. Uh, oh, Mateo is here now, and he's he's saying the Glock twenty six. Mateo, it's your fault, dude. You inspired me on that one, so I owe um, all my successes and failures to you. Uh, okay. so hopefully it will be successes. Hopefully they will be actually the frame went together very well. Um, and I, I think I had your good luck, uh, for that. Um, so, but, uh, but anyways, um, again, any, any last words for you, big Johnson? No, I'm all good. I hope everyone safe out there and, you know, and of course carry on and hope everyone has a great rest of their week and getting ready for Christmas. Nice, nice. Uh, Gizzard, you know, we all have our 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 friends out there and the, the thumbs down. It's it's the nature of the beast, my friend. Uh, well, you posted the, the second you posted the chat, I looked at it and someone went in and put a thumbs down. I'm like, really? Well, if you go back in, in my catalog um, of videos, um, especially the last probably 40 or 50 there within 24 hours, I always get three thumbs down. Um, mm -hmm. So it's the same three people every single time. So it's, oh, it's my, oh, it's, it's my, it's my parents and a random person. I don't know who knows, but, uh, but guys, uh, we ran a little bit long tonight. Uh, it's because you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing for hanging out with us and, and spending your, your Wednesday night with us. We had over a hundred people almost the entire night. And that is mind blowing to me. Each one of you are our friends, your family, you're amazing. And uh, you know, hopefully as we again, ramp up to the holidays, everything is just awesome for you guys. So uh, we have a great time. With you. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, man, we look forward to next week, if not before. Yep. Thank y'all very much. And please subscribe to everyone out there. You know, there's Josh right there, Josh Benware channel. That's the one I was talking about. Good guy. But uh, yeah, we're all in it for y'all. So we appreciate y'all so much. Thanks, everyone. guys. Have a great night. Later.